Well, welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. Today we are going to talk about an old saying that I've heard since I was young and I've used many a time. Are you hard at it? No. Are you hard at work or hardly working? We're going to talk about that today and how that applies to being self-employed, y'all. This is specifically for you guys and gals that are out here on your own making your own bread without a paycheck from anybody else. Guys, thanks for stopping in at the Piney Woods Homestead. Hit that like and subscribe if you hadn't. And guys, if you have, as always, y'all, we appreciate you. Y'all, that right there is some tough stuff. That's called pig nut hickory. People call it pig hickory around here. Some people just call it hickory because they don't realize there's different varieties of hickory. But it is some of the toughest stuff that we split on our splitter. And if you look down here, these are the toughest ones to split. These crotch pieces. Got double eyes in it right here. It's beautiful wood. And it is extremely tough and it takes a really tough machine to bust through some of that stuff and sometimes y'all you'll get into a crotch that is so tough you got to whittle that thing down you can't just bust it right in the center unless you got something that's like 50 ton or more but y'all we get through it but we're talking about working hard or hardly working i have heard that so much in my life and there's a lot of truth to it i can remember back when my brother and I first started our excavation services, golly, back in probably 1996 late or seven, no, 97, I believe it was, or 90, either way, it was a long time ago for us now. And anytime we'd run into somebody at the gas station or at the restaurant or anything like that, they'd say, you're working hard or hardly working? Because they were just picking with you, but there's a lot of truth to that, y'all, when it comes to self-employment. There's going to be times when you're working hard, and there's going to be times when you're hardly working. We'll expand on that as we go along in this video, y'all. Y'all, somebody had asked me in a comment on one of the last videos what socket size is for these through bolts up here on the top of the wedge, splitting wedge, and it is one and five sixteenths. I use this big tool set every now and then just to come through and give them a little torque because stuff will work loose, y'all, as you are working. And I have found the only one that loosens up at all is this front wedge. And I think the reason for that is because sometimes when we get some of that big hickory on here, and I'll show you that here in a little while, you will get a little bit of flex on this front wedge. And Bobby told me when I had this built, he said, you may get some stuff on there and you might see a slight bit of flex, but as soon as that round starts splitting, it's gonna level back out and drive through it. And it does, y'all. This frame is, holly, over two and a half inches wide. And I ain't put a tape on it, but I believe it's eight inches deep. It, it's massive frame, but just come through every once in a while and give it a little torque.
Sometimes I use the excavator to pick up the logs and buck them in place. Sometimes I just buck from the pile. Sometimes I chunk it over here by hand and sometimes I use the excavator. It just depends on how I'm feeling and how much diesel fuel I'm wanting to burn because that stuff is not cheap. And if you do firewood or whatever business you do, especially if it is service related or grading or pretty much anything that involves you putting out something in order to get something back, you gotta watch your margins because your margins aren't that high depending on what you're doing for a living if you're working for yourself. But are you working hard or hardly working? It's something I used to say to folks, you know, when I'd run into them, it was kind of just a joke, just picking with folks. But in all honesty, there's a lot of truth in that. Are you working hard or hardly working? If you are self-employed, there may be times when you are just covered up, covered up in work, weeks out, depending on what type of work you're doing. And it's not just heavy equipment operating. It, it could be any type of self-employment business that you have. You may be covered up in clientele. You may be covered up in jobs to get to. And there's also going to come times when you are not covered up in jobs to get to. And so you do your best to put back as much as you can while you're working to cover those times when you're not. And that's where firewood comes in for us, y'all. Um, that's, that's our plan, you know. When we got this thing started, we said we got to have something for those wet winter months, and it's getting wet now. And so firewood is part of that plan to help us get us over that hump and back to spring. But not that there's not work to do, because there is. It's just waiting on it to dry up, waiting on it to come in, that sort of thing. So most of the time, <laughs> and I hate that I did this, those years that I was in public service law enforcement, I'd run into people that I knew that were building houses or concrete workers or whatever, and I would say that, are you working hard or hardly working? And they knew what I meant, but looking back, I feel kind of bad because I was a government employee there for 15 years, and I found out pretty quick, especially once I got into a supervisory role, that when you're working for the government, it really doesn't matter if you're going above and beyond. You're still getting the same paycheck as the person that's the same rank or the same step pay grade as you. And so that, I really struggled with that for years. And people that work with me will tell you that my work ethic continued when I was in government work from self-employment. And I believe that that helped me as far as supervisory roles attaining that. But at the same time, it hindered me. And it hindered me because it would drive me crazy that some people would just do the bare minimum to get by, collect their paycheck, and they would complain about doing any more. And it was really nothing you could do. You couldn't crack that whip but so hard because it was a government job. And as long as they did the bare minimum, they could get by. Not the same with private employment. You either get the work done or at least in North Carolina, it's a right to work state. You either get the work done or they'll find somebody else to do it for you. And so it is with self-employment. Either you are willing to get the work done when you're working hard or hardly working, you're still working. I'm out here bucking firewood, preparing for the next person that needs home heating fuel. So you're still working hard. You're not just hardly working. So I wanted to get this piece of crotch hickory on here. We're going to fire up this all wood log splitter and see just how hard it is to get through it. And I can go ahead and tell you, 
with these crotch pieces, you got to whittle them down on this machine. Sometimes it'll plow through them. It just depends on how tight that crotch is. But the tighter that crotch, the harder it is to get through. So you got to be, and we've learned this basically just from trial and error. You just got to whittle that thing down. Y'all, when, when Lisa and I had first gone out on, on, out on, out on our own, if I can get my tongue untied, <coughs> had a fella tell me I was at a, a function and he said well I sure hope you can make it y'all if you want to go out on your own you're going to hear stuff like that from people that you know from people you don't know you're going to hear it from people at your current place of employment if that is your daily job and you've set up to leave you're going to hear people say they'll be back in a year or they'll be down here asking for a job in a year if you've got your ducks in a row or if you're in a situation like us and had to get your ducks in a row as long as you got your ducks in a row you got to go for it you can't let what other people say dictate your outcome you've got to go ahead and take that risk because it is a risk you're not you're no longer relying on somebody else to give you a paycheck once a month every two months however you get paid now it's on you it's on you to find the work it's on you to advertise to find the work it's on you to do a good job so you get referrals whatever profession that is I'm out here in overalls, running chainsaw and heavy equipment. You may be doing graphic design work or catering, making cakes. Who knows what it is? I know a lot of people that have higher education that just hated their job to the point where they went and did something they had a passion in, whether that was cooking, making cakes or what, and they make it. There's always somebody that's willing to step out and go for it and make it be that person that makes it get your ducks in a row and do it don't let people drag you down and most of the time y'all when folks say this it's folks that are too scared to do it on their own or maybe don't have that desire or that skill set so don't let the negativity that you're going to hear drag you down and miss an opportunity because of it Y'all, that is like petrified wood. Can you see that up in there? That is, golly, this is probably, a, I don't know, a 50-year-old hickory, probably older than that. And that crotch section is just extremely hard and hard to get through. This is some gnarly wood, y'all. Probably, probably the hardest species that we split. And so you noticed on that first run, I didn't give it all she had, but I, I did give it quite a bit and just positioned it differently and whittle her down. And I had to whittle the rest of it down, but this thing would get through it, y'all. But such is self-employment. 
Are you working hard or hardly working? Well, I hope you're working hard, even when you ain't got hardly no work. You got to be working hard, y'all, because you got to be preparing for when you have more work to go do, no matter what it is. If you are not honing your craft, if you're just sitting around twiddling your thumbs, you ain't doing no good. You got to be honing that craft. For us, this is like a bank account, a savings deposit account. We split the wood, we put it on the bunk, and when the time comes somebody needs it, we make a withdrawal, y'all. And so that helps us through the times when it's wet, there's nothing going on grading-wise, or a holiday, and we were through the holidays right now. So, Anyways, guys, don't be discouraged. I hope that this is a little bit of encouragement for you. Don't let the naysayers get you down. You got a dream, you got a goal, you got something that looks feasible. By all means, go for it. Guys, y'all have a good day, a great week, and Lord willing, and the creek don't rise too much higher, y'all. We'll see you on the next one.